In this video, I wanted to demonstrate and explain some of how this Bluetooth mod for this iPod video works. So real quick, I modified this iPod video to have a Bluetooth transmitter on the inside. I used an AirFly Pro. I have this small window cut out for the antenna. And the way I control this AirFly Pro is through a menu I added in Rockbox uh, where I can power on and off the Bluetooth module and I can also pair new sets of headphones. So I already have this paired to this JBL speaker. And so I wanted to demonstrate, you know, music going through the speaker. So this is transmitting through this Bluetooth module. So if, to, to, to clearly demonstrate that it's coming through this, I can go into the Bluetooth settings menu, you know, power it off. That'll power off the module. And again, we can power it back on. You'll see it flash twice. Connected and now it's playing again. I also got a few questions on if we can use AirPod Pros. Yes, we can, so let's demonstrate that. The way we do that is get the AirPods into pairing mode. We'll select pair on the settings screen. We'll see this flash orange and white. That means it's in pairing mode. And the AirPod Pros and the AirFly should pair. So they've successfully paired. We'll go back to the music and we'll see if I can place the headphones close such that you can hear the song. So that's with the AirPod Pros version two. And so that's the gist of the mod, you know, other than playing music through Bluetooth, the really great thing about this is just being able to control adding or disconnecting headphones, speakers. I often do this if I'm connecting to JBL or if I'm connecting my AirPods or just any other speaker when I'm out and about and I want to use my iPod. So, you know, the real question that I want to answer from everyone is, you know, how exactly does this work? Um, and I'll have my demonstration board set up. This might look a little bit daunting, but it's actually very easy. So on the iPod's 30 pin connector, that's standard on all these iPods, there's a few pins of interest and those are particularly pin 12, 13 and 11 as well, but pins 12 and 13, what those are are a receive and a transmit line for a serial bus that the iPod uses to communicate with accessories like iHome docks or the radio remote or just any other peripheral that was designed for the iPod. And so this serial bus can be controlled through Rockbox through very simple means. And what we, we basically do is have a microcontroller receive data from the iPod and emulate button presses as if I were pushing buttons on the AirFly Pro. And so to demonstrate real quick with a different iPod that doesn't have any modifications, this is a unmodified iPod other than replacing the battery and installing Rockbox on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this iPod, connect it to this setup, and I just want to demonstrate what that looks like, what the microcontroller inside of this iPod is doing. So we're going to go ahead and do is connect that to our 30 pin. There's no data going into this development board. This is only for power. And so this status light right here, this is just an indicator for the 3.3 volt power coming from the connector. I'll go into that a little more in a moment, but I just want to demonstrate uh, the menus again through the iPod. So I have, you know, basic rock box set up here. I'm gonna go into the settings menu. We're going to go to Bluetooth. And to demonstrate what power on looks like, I'll go ahead and move the setup over to where the LEDs are. 
This LED is going to be the button presses. So on my iPod, I have what would essentially be this output from this microcontroller connected through a transistor or some type of electronic switch to that button press on the Airfly Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and hit power on. And you're gonna notice that red LED is gonna stay on for a few seconds, and that is what is required to turn on the Airfly. Now for the pair setting, so we're going to go back to the menus and select pair. I'm going to take that, push pair, and it's going to be two quick pulses, if you notice that. So those two quick pulses are what's required for the Airfly Pro to activate the pair modes, like pushing the button twice really fast. And with power off, similar thing, it's a long press. So I'll go do that one, that whole sequence one more time. So a power on, there's a long press, a pair, there's two short pulses, and power off is also another long press. And so this microcontroller keeps some of the state. The way I have the program set up is it keeps some of the state. So if it if you say power on twice. So if you push it and then accidentally push that menu item again, it's not going to do another long press. It knows it's keeping track. I wouldn't say keeping track. It's just sort of mimicking the state that the Airfly Pro is in. Okay, so going into a little more details of how I have the microcontroller wired up inside is basically I have the power from that microcontroller getting taken off of this 3.3 volt bus that's internally. And the reason I did that is that 3.3 volt bus, which is what this green LED represents, if I go and power off the iPod, put it into shutdown mode, so we're gonna hold that play button, you're gonna notice that this LED shuts off after it shuts down. And so the good thing about that, instead of going directly from the battery bus on the iPod, is that Sony, and now the iPod reboot, and now the green LEDs back on, is in case there's a bug on the program and the microcontroller, you know, restarting the iPod or powering it off gives an opportunity to cut power from the microcontroller. Also, the communication lines are on that similar 3.3 volt bus. So that way it's just at the same logic level and we don't have to worry about that. And, you know, I, I'm clearly demonstrating this with two iPod videos. You don't have to use an iPod video with this mod. I want to demonstrate that I even have this same modification running on an iPod Nano. So what I want to do is go ahead and restart this iPod Nano into Rockbox. So what we're going to do is put this Nano on the board. Again, we have our LEDs. We're going to go into the settings menu and that settings menu also has the Bluetooth settings. And again, this is just a regular unmodified iPod Nano. And we're going to go to power on. And again, we're going to get to the LED setup. I'm going to watch that LED blink. And we could go to the pair settings again and pair. Right, so how, you know, I actually achieved this trying to cram all of this in here. I didn't use a microcontroller of this size. So what I had actually done was taken this stem board, it's an Arduino clone, and that had a surface mount microcontroller on there. We're going to try and do a size comparison. It's a lot smaller than that. I just programmed it through here remove that microcontroller and put it adjacent to the Airfly. Now, as far as space is concerned inside of the iPod, I used the thick back iPod for mine, you know, compared to the thin back, what I was demonstrating earlier. So the Airfly Pro is about similar size to this battery, you know, width and length. So if, if we're assuming the battery's right here, I essentially place that right underneath about there and cut a hole kind of adjacent to where the Apple logo is. So that would be almost right here. 
again, placement for the battery, placement for the AirFly and microcontroller. Now, as far as the size of the microcontroller is concerned, doing soldering this type of microcontroller fly wire freehand was quite challenging. I actually did break one of the pins on it. So for that type of situation, honestly, I would recommend almost something about this size. This is an AT Tiny 45, I believe, or a, one of the AT Tiny chips. It's an eight pin dip chip. And so what you could easily do with this is bend the pins flat, solder wires or fly wires directly onto there. And that should take up about, you know, that much space. It's not that thick. If we're gonna compare that to the size of the battery, you should have enough space to fit a Bluetooth module of your choosing or the AirFly Pro or whatever. But for my iPod particularly, I'm using that standard 850 milliamp hour battery or something. Almost, it's the same type of battery, just slightly larger, but it's basically this battery the AirFly Pro right underneath of it. Uh, and honestly, that lasts quite a long amount of time for how I use the iPod. One last thing I wanna mention because I did have to go through another motherboard because of this, uh, soldering to those pins. So there's those two pins that pin, what is it, 12 and 13 that you would so essentially solder two sets of small wires there. These pins are very delicate and fall out very easily. And there's a significant chance you could rip up the traces when trying to solder. So I'd recommend trying to use very thin wire. I use 30 gauge wire wrapping wire for this. There's other rework wire that's probably thinner that would be better suited for trying to get those connections. I don't know where else on the PCB the RX and TX lines are going to the system on chip or wherever the peripheral chip is. So if you can find out a different spot to solder those connection points to, that would probably work out a lot better than trying to solder directly onto that header. But essentially, that's it. It's that simple. All you really need is a microcontroller with the program connecting to the RX and TX lines on that 30 pin connector. Technically, you don't really need to connect anything to the RX line. Really, all it's doing is transmitting one way TX to the microcontroller. The only benefit of doing RX is if you wanted to modify Rockbox or modify the microcontroller to provide feedback so you could pull the status from here. The only potential drawback I see to Having the RX line connected is if you have a peripheral connected, also like an iHome dock or a, another thing like the radio remote or some other peripheral, you could potentially get bus contention between the microcontroller and whatever that peripheral is connecting to here. So you could have two transmitters trying to transmit at the same time, trying to talk to the iPod. That could potentially mess some things up. I don't know how bad, but really the easiest way to do this is just to use the TX line, you know, pin 12 on that 30 pin connector, connect that to an RX line on a microcontroller serial port, have the program set up to accept the commands through the menus. And just like that, you'll be able to control a Bluetooth module or whatever of your choosing through, uh, through the iPod. So that's it. So thanks for watching and leave any comments or questions. I appreciate it. Thank you.